Hey guys, this is Coco Baby and it is about 9 o'clock a.m. when I did this video. Look how cute he is. He's like barely awake. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start with his bath. I used Omela shampoo by Double K and I diluted it in a empty bottle that I had because the Super Setter system is really forceful, especially on puppies. So I decided I'd spare him. All right, so I'm pretty much just pouring this all over him, making sure that it's getting to his skin and I'm just scrubbing him down. Next up is his face and on all my dogs I use Spa by Tropi Clean Blueberry Facial Shampoo. It is a tearless shampoo and it helps lighten up their face and I'm just making sure that I'm getting any eye discharge or anything stuck in his beard from food and I'm really digging in there. Uh, again, it's tearless so this doesn't hurt his eyes at all and I like to leave it on for about a couple minutes so that's exactly what I'll do. So he did have little burrs in his fur so I'm just going in with my Chris Christensen brush and I'm getting rid of those before the drying process. And I'll be putting him on my table and there he goes, he's on my table, I am brushing him out. This may look like I'm going in rough but I am not, I promise. I just have to get through all these little mats that he has, I don't know if you could see it in his on his stomach especially. And it's really important to go ahead and brush your dog out before you dry them because it will ensure a shorter drying process and it'll make the fur dry a lot better this way. All right guys, so I'm going to grab my dryer right now and most dogs and puppies are scared of the dryer. So with him, it is my second time grooming him, um, but I'm still gonna have him smell the dryer just so he's kind of aware what is about to happen and I don't blindside him. Okay, so I will be using my heated dryer instead of my cool air dryer only because it was pretty chilly that morning. And I will be using that type of hose head instead of the very narrow one and pointed one because it'll use less force and he'll be less scared. I also have the dryer on the lowest setting.
I am taking the nozzle off the dryer only because I know it was gonna be way too harsh for his face. Uh, just be sure that when you do do this, that the fur on his head or on top of the dog's head and around the cheeks is well brushed because if not, it will take forever to dry. All right, now we're going into the haircut and the first thing I'm going to do is the sanitary area. And I like to do the sanitaries with a 15 blade. I feel like that blade is pretty safe for that area and it picks up all the little hairs. So I should mention before I start the haircut that I don't know if you could see the legs are pretty uneven because the dad is a barber and he tried to go ahead and give him a haircut and found out that it was a lot harder than expected. So I'm just going to even him out today. While doing a sanitary trim, your objective should always be to have that area really, really, really clean without the blade getting hot and without nicking the dog and without leaving any razor marks. Okay, so next I'm going to start shaving down his paw pads and I do this with a 40 blade and I'm very gentle with it because paw pads are very sensitive but I do get in between them because they tend to get matted up. All right, so I'm gonna use a number one comb on his body. This is how it looks. And I have a 40 blade under that. But first, I'm just gonna comb him one last time just to be sure that there are no tangles because if you are using a comb and there's tangles, it's not a good mix, you will leave marks. Most dogs really don't mind this process. It kind of feels good to them. It's like a massage. It's almost like there's like little fingers running through their fur. So they're most likely to fall asleep or just doze off. Okay, so every time I'm doing a haircut, especially a comb cut, I always have a comb right by me to just keep brushing out the fur and ensuring that the comb is grabbing all the fur possible and doing it evenly.
His little face cracks me up here because he's literally like, what are you going to do with all that? Where are you taking all that? Your objective is really to get as much of the coat off as possible with the comb, but you're not going to be able to get all of it and to get all into all those nooks and crannies. So that's what the scissors are for and the thinning shears are for because it's all going to come together at the end. You're going to get all those little hairs that you didn't get with the comb with your scissors and your thinning shears. I do put cotton balls in their ears. It's up to them if they like it or not. I do this before the drying process so it's not so loud. And that's exactly what I took out of his ear right there. A little trick I have when grooming the belly is that I go reverse with the comb just to blend the belly with the sanitary area. So I took off the comb for just a second to shave out his armpits. Um, I don't really go really deep with the blade. I just literally just touch the surface of his armpit because it's a very sensitive area and the skin's really thin there. So you just want to be careful that the, you don't nick them. And yes, I kiss them any chance I get. All right, so right now I am getting out my lovely Chris Christensen curved scissors and I'm going to use this on him to, you see all that extra little hairs that are sticking out on his paws. I'm going to even that out now and I'm gonna round out his paws and then I'll round out his legs and we will move on to the face. To even out his paws, I'm using the Half Moon Chris Christensen comb. The teeth are so together that it'll bring out any little hairs that are out of place. So I really love this um, for paws and for faces and even tails. All right, guys, I just kind of want to give you guys what I see when I'm scissoring a leg. I see a leg as five parts. First, the paw, and that's what I do first. I scissor the paw because this paw is going to give me an indication on how thick the leg is going to be. And then I concentrate on the four parts of the leg, which is the back of the leg, the left side, the front, and then the right side of the leg. And I just go scissoring all around but I do these in sections and just make sure that everything flows together at the end. 
The inside of the leg for me is definitely the hardest to scissor um, and that is why I lift up his leg and scissor it that way because I'm just trying to angle myself just to get the most even cut. Again, you see I'm starting with the paws first and I'm literally letting my scissors do the work for me. I'm just going all around the paw, but because the scissors are already curved, they're going to make that shape for me. I just have to make sure that I'm cutting evenly all around. The key to a great looking neat groom is definitely balance and stability in your hands, especially because we're working with a moving canvas. Um, so you have to just keep as steady as possible. And of course, having the eye for detail and also accounting for every little piece of fur or hair that is sticking out. And I do want to say that this takes practice. So people that are just starting out or groomers that are just new to this craft, Please don't start, stop practicing and be patient with yourself. You're going to get it. Notice how the one comb didn't go too short on him, but it was short enough just to even everything out. That's what I love about combs, that you're never gonna get the shaved look. All right, so the first thing I do when I start off on faces is I grab my guide thinning shears and I thin out all the hairs in between their eyes so they are able to see and I am able to start ahead and shape their face. One of the most important aspects of grooming is knowing how to handle a dog and just how to position yourself while grooming them so when i'm grooming the face i usually hold very gently their beard so they know not to move and i could just balance myself out with my shears I find that most dogs find this part really relaxing. I feel like it feels really good uh, between their eyes and I feel like they like the feeling of being able to finally see. So they usually stay very still for me. When I do their cheeks, I just flip over the ears so I could see what I'm working with. And a little hack is that you could take the same comb that you used on their body and just go down on the cheeks with them because then that way it'll be less scissoring for you. I switched out my one comb to my zero comb. A zero comb is a bit longer and that is why I'm using it on his head. If you were to use a one comb, it would probably look really short. So you always wanna keep the head a tad bit longer. I am now prepping to scissor his bangs. That's about to come. I'm about to pick up my comb. There I go. This is one of my favorite parts because it's so fun to shape. Uh, so what I do is that I comb everything forward and I go in with my curves and I just 
go at it. Again, let your scissors do the work for you. Just be sure that you are cutting evenly. Just like the legs, the head also has sides to it that you have to account for. So the head has the top and then it has both of the sides, the left and the right, and then it has the bottom. Okay, so you just have to make sure that all of that at the end comes together and the nose is somewhere in the middle. I just feel like it's really easy to think about it that way because this way you're just breaking everything up in sections. So you know, once you look at a face before you groom it, it could be overwhelming, but if you break it down and just concentrate on a section at a time, everything's just gonna come together at the end. Guys, I just need to point out on how good this dog is behaving. I mean, it's only his second time with me. He kind of knew what to expect, but still he's a baby and he's really new to this whole process. Um, and he's just, he was such a good sport. He's such a sweet boy. When you groom puppies, you have to be very patient with them and just very have a very calm energy because the first groom always indicates they're grooming for the future. Uh, so if you do have a puppy and you have and you're a puppy owner, please start them off young. It's really important that you do and try to find a really good patient groomer. So the process could be great for all parties involved. I'm gonna try to grab his little hairs now um, from the front of his mouth. They're like sticking out. I do this with a 15 blade, but he was kind of not having it. I didn't really want to push it because uh, I was just very scared he was gonna lick. So I kind of just gave up on it and I will get him more used to this as we go. All right, so I picked up the same thinning shears that I used to thin in between his eyes with. I am just going and blending his whole face together. I'm taking off all the sharp edges and all the little scissor marks. So if you're like scissoring a face and you're leaving marks, I mean, try to scissor as precise as you can, but if you're like leaving marks, don't really worry about it because you could erase this with a thinning shear. Literally thinning shears are erasers. And in the makeup world, thinning shears are blenders. They're blending brushes. All right, so we're almost done and we're moving on to his ears. Literally, I just pick up his ears and I go around with my scissors and I just follow the shape of his ear. All right, I'm not gonna go crazy on it. I'm just gonna go I'm gonna round them out and then I'm gonna thin thinning shear them and they're just gonna look cute as a button, you'll, you'll see.
last but not least i'm going to use my chris christensen chunkers to go over his whole body just to be sure that no hair is left behind and that everything is looking even oh my god guys just look at his little face look how innocent he is I absolutely love using chunkers on tails because they make them look so flowy and so natural. Uh, you could use scissors at first just to take the length off. Sometimes if the tail's too long, that's what I'll do. And then I'll go ahead and use my chunkers just to even everything out and just make things look a little bit more natural and not so straight edged. All right guys, something I wanna point out is that when dogs walk, they usually walk with their tails up in the air, um, not downward, so you could see in between their legs. And when the owner sees in between their legs, they should see very neat lines. That's just gonna make your groom look so amazing. So I'm really, really just detailed on the inside of the legs and making sure that every little hair is in place. Watch how sleepy he is. Like you could tell in a little bit. Look how he's blinking. This process should be really relaxing for them. It really shouldn't be stressful. Okay, so by the next groom, I'm going to be letting that hair grow. That I just signaled that area because there should be more hair there just to make the legs look a little fuller. Oh, hey, hit that like button if you haven't so already.